Good morning. Welcome to Vineyard Milwaukee. We're glad you're here. We're going to start worship today um, with a few songs, and we're this is the Advent season, and we're this is a time where we're really seeking God and and requesting that God would come and and come with with His presence. So let's let's do that this morning and. Yes. 
We are hungry. We are hungry. Oh, oh. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry. Nobody like, nobody like you, my Jesus. Nobody like, nobody like, nobody like you, my Jesus. Nobody like, nobody like, nobody like you, my Jesus. Nobody like, nobody like, nobody like.
speechless in grace and mercy. There is nowhere we can hide from your love. You are steadfast, never failing. You are faithful. All creation is in awe of who you are. You're the healer of the sick and the broken. Our King and our Savior forever. For eternity, we will sing of all you've done. For eternity, we will sing of all you've done. We sing. Your heart, it moves with compassion. There is life, there is healing in your love. You're the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. For eternity, we will sing of all you've done.
says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. So today we light the candle for peace. So, Lord, we just thank you for meeting with us today. For, for being for us and being with us. And we just say, come Holy Spirit, we invite your presence where hungry to meet with you this morning. So I pray you just fill this space right now with your love, with yourself, with your peace and your joy. Just pour out your spirit on us, Lord. Just refresh us and renew us and heal us and set us free. Any place that we need you, Lord, I pray that you would just come in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, everyone. You may have a seat. So glad to see you here during Advent. We look forward to seeing you uh, all month long as we anticipate and celebrate the arrival of God with us. Um, if you are new with us in the room or you are visiting with us from home, um, we just invite you to share with us your contact information so we can add you to the newsletter so you can... Be aware of what's going on in the life of our church. If you're in the room, we have QR codes at the table you can scan. If you're not a QR person, we do have hard copies. Um, they should be back by the black box. If they're not, we'll make sure they are. And you can just fill one out and slip it into the black box. That's right there in the back of the room. If you're with us at home, we have a place on our website that you can also uh, share your contact information. And if none of those work, we have a phone number there and some emails, you can just call or email any one of us. And we would just love to uh, get to know you, add you to our email list, and if you'd like to meet with us to find out more about what's going on in the life of our church, we'd love to do that. Uh, the black box is also one of the places that we receive our tithes and offerings. Uh, you can just slip it in there at any point during worship. We also have a couple options online. You can text to give, you can give on our website. And so we just encourage you to continue to give generously to the Lord as he generously to us. Other than that, I just have a couple announcements for us. Um, today is our 414 event. Uh, if you would like to uh, experience more of Greg, although I think he'll be playing a different kind of set of music this afternoon, but his, Greg and his band, um, Juno Town, is playing today at Chansky's Bar, and they are on first, so they come on around 2 o'clock. And so if you would like to participate with that, just head over to Chansky's Bar. There's the address if you need to look it up. Um, and then the only other announcement is next Saturday, this coming Saturday, actually, a week from yesterday, is our women's tea. And today is the very last day that you can RSVP for that. Because um, I'm, I'm helping Joanne to prepare all the food. And if you've ever done, like, the high tea thing, it takes a lot of time and preparation to make all those little sandwiches. So we need to know the exact numbers, we get the tables set up and know how much food we need and all of that. So the way you can RSVP is in the last couple newsletters, one that just came out on Thursday, if you open it up, there's a link where you can just quickly go on and let Joanne know that you're coming. And so um, please do that today. This is one of those rare situations where we have to have like a real strict cutoff on <laughs> The RSVP. So today is the day. So please RSVP if you want to join us for that. Um, Three o'clock this coming Saturday. And I think that is it for, for announcements. Um, in your newsletter this week, we will lay out all the details of kind of how we're handling Christmas. We, we are meeting all the way up until Christmas Eve. We have a Christmas Eve service. Uh, and then we'll be taking Christmas Day off. And New Year's Day... Um, January 1st, we are going to have a uh, recorded service. So you can just stay in your jammies and watch that one at home, okay? But we'll have that all laid out in the newsletter, but I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. All right, and then Dave's going to continue our series on being formed in power. Good morning, everybody. That. All right. 
I need a second. I've got to do the whole setup stuff here. I'm Dave. Nice. Nice to be here. Okay. Everyone knows who Dennis is now. Um, uh, so uh, I'm raising a Wisconsin child. I, and, I, and I know this now because it's winter and he refuses to wear a coat. Right? And in the morning we get ready for school and I'm like, we got to go. And he's like, I'm ready. I'm like, no, you're not. You don't have a coat on. No, I don't need one. I'm like, it's freezing outside. You need a coat. No, I don't need a coat. I got a hoodie. I got a hoodie. I'm good. I'm good, Dad. I'm good. We'll put a hat on. No, I don't do hats. I got a hoodie. We're not doing the coat, Dad. I'm not doing it. Walks outside. Like, look, I'm standing outside, Dad. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm like, no, you have to wear a coat. And we get in this argument. And he finally he gets a coat on because I'm his dad, and he's supposed to say, wear a coat when I say wear a coat. And so he gets his coat on, but we've already started our morning, and we're arguing a little bit. And, and then I get to school, and I drop him off. I'm like, hey, love you, son. Like, have a great day. And I get a text from his mother. You dropped him off at school too early. He's going to freeze to death. I'm like, he's got his coat on. But no, he's going to be cold. You, he, you, know, you shouldn't drop him off so early. You always do is you drop him off too early, and, and, and he's got to be outside. But he wants to go early because he wants to hang out with his friends. So I take him early, and she's like, but it's too cold to go out, out early. The doors aren't open yet. He's going to freeze. He's got a coat on. What's the big deal? I got the coat on, and I'm already starting my day going. I don't know if you've ever, do you remember um, George Costanza's dad? Um, Frank, Frank Costanza. Serenity now, Now, right? I'm already going, serenity now, right? Serenity now. And then I think, okay, I'm going to go to work. And I think, well, you know, I'll just turn on some talk radio and just see what's going on in the world. (laughs) Just to see maybe what the other side is saying. You know, I'm just going to see what the other side is saying. Not a good idea. Find myself very quickly, serenity now, serenity now, right? I get to work, and I'm faced with people who are, 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 that, are that, that have problems, and, and their system problems, and it, it, these, some of these problems should be really easy to fix, like the fact that it gets cold here every year in Wisconsin. We have winter. I don't know why we haven't fixed our cold warming shelter system but like every year, and I sit there and it boggles my mind. I'm like, we live in Wisconsin. Winter is not a surprise. It's not a surprise. It gets cold here, people. Like, figure out the shelter thing. And I'm just, you know, serenity now, serenity now. And then I got to go visit a client who's living on the street. And I show up and, and he's not there, but his stuff's there. And I'm greeted by a nice gentleman, a nice gentleman, who says, oh, you're with Homeless Outreach? I'm like, yes, I am. I, I'm, I'm with Homeless Outreach. Good, you're going to get rid of all this stuff, right? Get this guy out of here. Get rid of all his stuff. I'm like, well, that's really not how we work, sir. Like, we don't just take people's things. Well, he's not here, right? I'm like, well, no, he's not here right now, but, like, he'll come back. Well, get his stuff out of here. And I'm like, well, that's, I'm not going to take someone's personal things. He goes, that's the problem with you people. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me, you people. Yeah, you people are just enabling him. You're just letting them stay here as long as they want, and then you give them free rent, and then you move them into my apartment building, and then you got all these homeless people and mentally ill people, and you have prostitutes, and you're giving them all free rent, and you stick them in my apartment building, and I got to deal with them. And I'm like, that's really not what I do, right? That's not what I do. What do you do, sir? He's like yelling at me. And I'm like, you've got, you don't know what I've got. I had to deal with coats this morning. Right? I had to deal with an 11-year-old with coats. And he's yelling at me and he goes, who is your supervisor? And I'm like, I'm happy to give you my supervisor's name. I'm happy to tell you, listen, buddy, like, people are going, everyone's going through some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's got their stuff they're going And we try to help people who are going through stuff. He goes, I know about stuff, this guy says. And I'm like, you do? And he goes, yes, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Very good. Let's talk about that, sir. And he's like, I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about this guy who's living in the park. You're probably going to stick in my building and ruin my building. And it keeps going. And I am just building to a total froth. I've 
totally lost it. And I'm like, you know what? You can talk to my supervisor. And here's my card. And I choke him and I say, serenity now. I'm so mad. Now, the truth is, some of that really happened. Some of that was exaggerated for this story. And some of that happened in my head. And I'm going to let you determine what's what and where it was. Okay? But we have, we deal in life, we have all of these issues. We have all of these stressors. And we're screaming serenity now. We have, we have this weight of relationships. We have weight of politics, economics, families, opinions are everywhere. Media. It's crazy. And it feels like around Christmas it always gets a little, little nuttier, right? People get a little more on edge. And then we get close to elections and people get even more on edge. I want to share with you uh, a, a place in the Bible, Isaiah chapter 11. It's in the Old Testament. And in this text, it's a prophecy that is announcing that one day that the Messiah is going to come and he's going to bring peace. Then it describes what the world would look like under God's rule and reign where there will be no division. So Isaiah 11, verse 1 says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Jesse is King David's dad, by the way, and Jesus came from his family line. From this roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And we will delight in, fe in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with a rod of his mouth. With, his, with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt. And faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf, ready? This is what the world's going to look like when he has full reign. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the year yearling together, and a little child will lead them. And my dog will not poop in the house anymore. I added that one in. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The elephant and the donkey will like each other. Anyone paying attention? You catch that? Okay, all right. I'm just making sure. I'm adding stuff to Scripture. I want to make sure you know that I'm just adding that in. That wasn't really there. Okay, all right. The infant will play near the cobra's den. The young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a world like that? Can you imagine? Can, you, you can't make this kind of peace happen, by the way. Like, you can't do it. You can't make this kind of peace. I cannot make a lion eat hay and sit with a lamb. I can't do it. I cannot heal generations of injustice, racism, and oppression. I cannot bring harmony to this environment. I cannot create unity in our governmental system. Neither can you. Neither can you. Disharmony, opposition, friction is always going to be around until the Lord has come and is in complete rule and reign of our world. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We are always going to live in this tension in our world. And I can't change that, and neither can you. One of my favorite stories... Uh, of J and Jesus is um, is a story where he's he's teaching, and they bring in this woman, and they right in front of you know the crowd of of folks, and they bring in this woman, and they're like, teacher, this woman has committed adultery. Adultery, deal with her, right? We should stone her. 
We should stone her. Teach this woman. She was caught in an adultery. And in the law, Moses commands us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? I love this. Jesus draws in the sand. And there's all these debates about what Jesus was drawing in the sand. <laughs> I think it was like, serenity now. <laughs> right? It says, serenity now. <laughs> these people are driving me crazy. Um, no, but he, he writes in the sand, and then he looks up, and he says, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And what does the crowd do one by one? Drop the stone and walk away. Walk away. It's amazing. Jesus actually creates peace, becomes a peacemaker, changes the whole scene with just a few words. Turns an angry crowd away. Like that is so amazing. Jesus is the ultimate example of peace. He turns an entire crowd away with just a few words. But he's even more than that. He's even more than that. In Ephesians 2, 13 through 18, it says this. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. This, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. See, God is a God of heavenly peace. Heavenly peace. The one that can create the lion to lay down with the lamb and eat hay came to earth as a human being to break through all of the chaos and reconcile us. He takes on the chaos, shows us how to live a life of peace. And you can try to change your behavior on your own. Um, and there's lots of tools and strategies that, that can, you can use to help you. Therapy is always good, always a fan of therapy. However, in my experience, when you try to create this peaceful life that we're talking about, doing it without God just gets you trapped in a maze. You get trapped in a maze. You're stuck in a never-ending maze of turmoil that you don't see a way out of. And it's always there. But Jesus, Jesus is actually the way out. Jesus is the way to peace. Now check this out. Jesus said in John 16, he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So he says, in him we have peace. Jesus is going to give me peace. He says I'm going to have some trouble. Right? That's the bad news. It's not going away. You're going to have trouble. It's always going to be around. But I don't have to take the weight of all of the world because Jesus also said that he's going to fix the world. That's not my responsibility. There's going to be trouble. Jesus is going to give me peace, and he's fixing the world. Now, he says this in Colossians 3.15. No, he didn't say this. Paul wrote it. Just clarification. Uh, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Now, I got this picture recently, and I, I, think, it, I think it helps explain that a little bit. This picture was really for me, but I think it's for you too. Or at least parts of it. So I got this picture that I was a coffee thermos. Okay? I was a coffee thermos. I think I say, that's weird, Dave. But that happens sometimes with me and God. We, we pray, and then he kind of leads me down a path. And I was this coffee thermos. And I'm sitting there going, how am I a coffee thermos? That's your identity. You're a coffee thermos. And what God was doing, he was pouring hot coffee into me. He was pouring hot coffee into me. And it was beautiful. I was like, that's great. I love coffee. This is great. 
And then, and then what he showed me was a bunch of different types of coffee cups, right? Different types, different sizes, shapes, colors. And I was pouring from my big coffee thermos out the coffee into the different cups. He goes, that's your identity. That's who you are. You can only pour out what I pour into you. And as I was pouring these cups in, um, uh, on these different coffee cups, people were drinking from them. Some of them were drinking it right away. Some of them were letting it cool for a little bit. And I remember in, in, in sort of this prayer time, someone goes, I, I don't want coffee, I want tea. I want tea. And in me, I was like, oh, God, we got to have tea. I got to get tea. And he's like, no, you don't. You can only give what I have given you. You can only pour in to them what I have poured into you. And that is your identity. That is your identity. Now, friends, I think that is how God is going to use us to change the world. I think that's the way he changes the world. That is the plan. You see, God is changing the world. He is turning you all into coffee mugs, and he is pouring into you. He is pouring into you peace. He is pouring into you the power of his peace, and what he's asking you to do is just give it away. It's to give it away, but here's the thing. You can't you can't manufacture this thing of peace. You're a coffee mug. It has to be poured into you. It has to be poured into you. And as you, as you let God pour into your life, your life changes from the inside out. You're able to give. You are able to receive. And people know you by your peace. They know you by your peace. Now, I think some of us here today have had our coffee travel mug and we've never taken the lid off. And you are empty. You're empty. You don't know what, that, what I'm even talking about. It's confusing. Like, what do you mean? What kind of peace are you talking about? I'm talking about allowing God to enter into your life. Enter into your life and just pour into you, pour into you a peace that is not of this world that will change your life forever. And so when we get to prayer ministry time, I'm going to ask you, if you've never done that, if you've never taken the lid off of your coffee cup and said, all right, God, you've never taken the lid off your heart, pour into me. I want to receive what you have to offer. We want to do that today. And then there's some of you, I think, I feel like you've actually, you've had the, the lid off, but you've allowed lots of stuff to be, other than what he has to offer get poured into you. You have been influenced by lots of things that you have dumped into your travel mug. You've just let it dump in, whatever you want, just... You know, I can't remember what my kid calls it, but when, when you go to, what do they call it, a, a suicide when they make the drinks and they you know, take a hit of every single fountain drink there is, right? There's some of you that have been doing that. And that's disgusting, right? It's gross. You've let all kinds of things in there. Some of them you snuck in. You didn't even know. It was like the mystery soda. You let that in there. You don't know. You thought it was a good idea at the time. I thought it was a good idea. And, and what I, what I want to say to you today is I really, truly believe this. Like, God wants us to say, hey, let's, let's just dump all that junk out. Let's just jump that junk out. And then I just want to pour into you my peace that is always there for you. Always there for you. Always there for you. And so that's what I think what God wants to do today. So here's what I want to do. I want us to, I want us to stand. This is a short talk. But I want you to stand. I'm going to invite the worship band up. Um, there's a third group. There's a third group I want to just mention real quick. 
And that, that is some of you that feel like, hey, I have a little bit of understanding of this piece. I, I, Dave, I've gone down this road. I, I have, uh, I've had Jesus in my life. You know, I'm trying, I've, I've followed him in the past. But you, ha- you haven't opened that lid up in a while. Like it's been a while. You have some old coffee in there. It needs to be warmed up a little bit. And I, I want you to receive prayer today, too. So what, what I want to do is, is three things. The first one is, if you have never, if you've never said, Jesus, I want your peace in my life. I want to be changed from the inside out. If you've never done that, I want to invite you today. We're going to have a prayer ministry team in the back, to my left, your right. I want you to go to that prayer ministry team and say, you know what? I want to actually invite Jesus. I want him to pour into me. I want him to pour in. I've never had that before. I want you to get prayer today. If you're a person who says, you know what? I've been pouring a lot of junk into my life. Maybe it's a little Jesus, a little bit of soda, a little bit of all this kind of stuff. That I know it's it's got me doing that cycle of rage that I was experiencing, that I, my story in the beginning, right? Get down this cycle and I can't get out of it. I'm stuck in the maze. I'm stuck in the maze. I'm influenced by all kinds of stuff. And I just want peace. I want that perfect peace in my life. And I want God to pour that into me fully and get rid of all the other stuff that's in there. And if that's you, I want want you to receive prayer today too. Because here's the deal. If if we are are followers of Jesus, if we are uh, apprentices of Jesus, As we engage the marketplace, as we engage community, as we engage our family, our loved ones, our friends, what is poured into us should pour out is evidence of our relationship with Jesus. Those actions of peace, those are evidence that we're receiving peace. Allow Jesus to pour into you today the power of peace. Allow him to pour into you. Rebecca's going to come up and share a few other words, and we're just going to continue to worship. When I was praying this morning over our service, I had a sense of God wanting to kind of um, deliver some people. And um, the primary word I got, which is interesting, I didn't even really know where Dave's message, what he was going to talk about today, but I anger was a big word that was coming to me that some people are kind of being gripped by anger they just feel themselves easily their internal response is anger and that can sometimes not even manifest outwardly sometimes it can just be an internal like you're just gripped and you're just so angry at what whoever offended you or whatever the thing is and the second thing which may they may be connected was fear and control and often those three are linked together, but I, those could be separate things. I'm not sure. But that anger piece was definitely like highlighted for me. Um, and sometimes that can just be an area where the enemy's just kind of got a grip on you. And so if that really speaks to you, I really felt the Lord wanting to just supernaturally um, deliver you from that. Um, and then I also had the, a picture in the word marshmallow, which sounds silly, but it's one that God uses with me a lot when he wants me to lighten up and my sense was that some of you just feel really heavy just like almost like a set of melancholy like level of heavy and kind of as Dave was saying sometimes the ability to lighten ourselves up it feels almost too hard um, and it's something that God can do but we have a, an invitation to lean into that to choose to receive that from the Lord. And so that I sense the Lord wanting to um, light some of you up that are feeling kind of heavy. And so again, if if you'd like to receive prayer today, there'll be several people to my left, your right. Um, Feel free at any point to go over to receive prayer.
ready for 